Okay, as I was saying, when we started here, now we're looking at our first function, which is your hyperbola. And if we investigate the equation, minus 6 over x plus 3 plus 2. Now, this actually tells us a story. And if we look on my right-hand side, you will notice that the general form of your equation of the hyperbola is f of x equal to a over x minus p plus q. So you as mathematicians, you need to understand what each letter represents and how to find the value of a in an equation. So looking at vertical asymptotes, the vertical is a line that you can see, that's a vertical asymptote. And if we want to know what the vertical asymptote for this equation would be, it is represented by the denominator. And all we're doing here is changing the sign. And we have x equal to minus 3. So when you look at the general form, the letter P represents your vertical asymptote. If we move on to the horizontal asymptote, which you can see denoted by this line, so we can make a conclusion that y equal to 2, which is represented by q, represents your horizontal asymptote. So if we want to determine the range of this hyperbola, that means what values in terms of y that the graph has allocated to it, so we would say that y can be anything except the asymptote, which is sitting at y equal to 2. So if we had to define that, y is the element of reals, comma, y not equal to the asymptote. In a similar way, we can talk about the domain. And the domain, we would say x can be anything, x element of reals except x not equal to, and you can see it to be minus 3. So looking at the general form, when we determine our range, it's y L is an element of reals, comma, y not equal to the q value. And for your domain, x element of reals, x not equal to the p value. And to find the x-intercept, we all know we're going to let y equal to 0. The x-intercept in this graph is 0. It is a point where the graph cuts the x-axis. And then to find your y-intercept, we all know we let x equal to 0. So the x-intercept and y-intercept is standard for all our graphs. So if we refer to this figure, and we'll notice how we get the graph transforming. I just want to do a little bit of a transformation. Your, your standard graph is y equal to a over x, where your x-axis and your y-axis represents your asymptotes denoted by the red. So that's our original. So if we move the graph three left, I think that happened a little too fast for you. Let's rewind. So look at the red graph. We're going to move it three left. So if we move the, the red graph, 3 left, what is the effect on the equation? So we'll say y equal to x plus 3, which means that our asymptote now has moved to x equal to minus 3. And you can see that is denoted by your red line. So now I want you to think about if we're going to move the graph up, so if we grow, move our graph two units up, let's go back to that. There's our red graph. We're going to move it two units up. And you'll notice the effect on the equation is that the asymptote actually shifted to y equal to 2. And that is how we come up with our asymptotes from the standard y equal to a over x. And for us to find the equation of this hyperbola, we've got to substitute a value 
that the graph passes on. And in this case, the only value that we have is the origin, which is sitting at zero, zero. So all we're going to do is substitute that into the equation. And if we do that, we can solve for A. And we get A is equal to minus 6. So we can now take the A equal to minus 6, place it back into the equation, and that will give us the equation of the hyperbola, which is Y equal to A is minus 6. So we can say minus 6 over x plus 3 plus 2. So that's just the basics and intro into the hyperbola. Now, one of the famous questions that always comes out in a hyperbola is to determine the axis of symmetry. Now, the axis of symmetry, can anyone tell me what an axis of symmetry is? Nobody wants to talk to me tonight? What is an axis of symmetry? Somebody, somebody. So it uh, separates the graph so that both sides are symmetrical. I like that. So it's a line that will cut our graph in half so that both sides or the graph is symmetrical. So the hyperbola, there's an axis of symmetry. Now that is a straight line. Therefore, the equation is y equal to mx plus c. So the gradient, we can call this the increasing function. Because from left to right, it's going up. Or we could say that this has a positive gradient. So if it has a positive gradient, we know that the equation or the gradient of this graph will always be positive 1. And the point that the axis of symmetry will pass through is the intersection of the asymptotes. And if you remember, if we go back, that the asymptotes are sitting at minus 3 and 2. And it's denoted by our graph as well. So we're going to substitute the x value of minus 3 and the y value of 2. So there's our y equal to plus 1 for your gradient to be 1. And then if we substitute the value of y to be 2 and minus 3, we come up with a c value of 5, which means that this graph is y equal to x plus 5. Now, in a similar way, so you saw the first axis of symmetry. We can also get an axis of symmetry which has a negative gradient. It'll still pass to the point where the asymptotes meet, minus 3, 2, but it's a downhill, which means it's a decreasing function or a negative gradient function. So in this case, y will be equal to minus x plus c, and then what we have to do is substitute the point minus 3, 2 which we've done similarly. And then we get C to be minus one. So the equation of this as, uh, axis of symmetry is Y equal to minus X and C is minus one. So very basic intro into the hyperbola. It's a nice graph. It very, very comes up in the paper. It's, it's very easy questions uh, on the hyperbola. Quite common in lots of papers. So we're going to step a, a little further. We're going to talk about transformation, which, which now doesn't only affect your hyperbola, but it actually pertains to all functions. So if we look at the first one, h of x is equal to f of x plus 3. Okay, that's f of x. All right, someone tell me. On the first one, what are we doing to the graph? So if, if a question in the paper comes up, describe the translation or the transformation of the graph F to produce H. What will you say in words? The graph is being shifted three units. Well done. The graph is moving three units up. So all we're doing to F of X, we're adding a plus three. Now watch how the equation is affected. 
So there's your original f of x, and all I'm doing is adding 3. And we all know 2 plus 3 is 5. Sorry, don't worry about that. I'm going to take my pen out. Okay. So with the first one, we got 2 plus 3 giving you 5. So let's look at a second one. What would you say is the transformation that is taking place on F on the second one? Oh, sorry, by the way, gentlemen, that they can ask you a question describing words. I know in, in math, you don't like to write any words. You only like to write, to write X and Y and 2 and 3. But question, what is or describe the transformation in words? Buddy. Mr. Trotter is with us. Trotter, would you like to help us out there? Maybe he doesn't have a mic. So it doesn't it shift uh, two units to the right? Okay, he's saying two units to the right. Absolutely. Okay, so we do a change of sign. And what we see here is x minus 2, and if we do a change of sign of that, x is equal to 2. So what will the equation actually look like? So where you got an x, you're going to replace that with x minus 2. And if we actually work that out, you're going to get a minus 6, and you got minus 2 and a plus 3 giving you the plus 1. And that's how we get the equation f of x is equal to minus 6 over x plus 1 plus 2. Okay, before I put up the answer, let's talk about it in words. What are we doing here? What's happening to f in words before we go into? So the graph has been shifted two units to the right. That is not correct. Somebody else? Sorry, sir, to the left. My bad. Which one are you talking about, young man? Are you talking about this one? I'm, I've got to start. So the f of x minus 2. No, no, we finished so that one. Inverse, sir. Okay, we finished that inverse. one. We're on, we on h of x equal to minus f of x. So I wanted to know from you guys what is taking place in words to the graph. So it's the inverse of the f of x, sir. No. So f of x represents y. We, we're basically changing the y to negative. Now, if you look at your axis, on your y-axis, you got a plus minus. So what we're doing here, if y is negative, it'll change to plus. If it's plus, it'll change to negative. So what we're actually doing here is we are reflecting. The word we're looking for is reflecting on the x-axis. Okay, can you see? If we reflect on the x-axis, then your y changes its sign. So that's what we're doing. And for us to actually get the equation out, We just put a negative in front. Okay. We go to our equation that you see our original equation. Our original and we put a negative in front. And then we can distribute the negative. A negative times negative is a positive. Okay. We jump that. Let me write that down. So what we're actually doing here is we're changing all the signs. You can see that the minus will become a plus. So it becomes 6 over x plus 3, can you see a negative times a negative is a plus, and this plus will change to a minus 2. So can you see that plus changing to a minus 2? So we're changing the signs. And you'll remember from, uh, I think, grade 8 maths, you put a negative in front of a bracket, it will change all the signs in brackets. So the next one, the last one there, what, what, what reflection is that now? Across the y-axis so yes we are making x change its sign so if we look at the x-axis which are having green coming up so now 
we are reflecting on the y-axis. That's the word we're looking for. We are reflecting here. Okay. Reflecting on the y-axis. And if we reflect on the y-axis, what we're doing is changing the x only to negative. And then we can simplify that. And that will produce a, a, an equation for us called minus x plus 3. So that is your reflection on the y-axis. Any questions on transformation? So as math students who are writing a grade 12 paper, we are expecting you to be able to describe transformation in words and also come up with the equation. So a paper can tell you this. Uh, give us the equation of h of x where f of x is reflected on the y-axis. And you must know all you're doing there is changing the x to negative. Any questions? All right. So let's look at a question that came out in a past paper. All right. The first question there is to show, given f of x, I want you to write this down on a page. I hope you're working with me. This is not a movie. So I want you to start working with me now. Right on a page. F of x is equal to x minus 3 over x plus 2. You don't have to write down these questions. I'll post this recording. So we want to bring this to this form. Okay. Because we like 5.1's form. We can interpret it nicely. So for me to be able to do that, we know that f of x is equal to x minus 3 plus 2. So, we're actually going to split this up. And you must be wondering what I mean by this. Okay, so let's peep at where we want to go. If we look at the top, we want a 5. Now, I have minus 3. So, I know that for me to maintain minus 3, how can I write minus 3 with a 5? That's one way that we can actually look at it. And then if we investigate further, and looking at this graph and nothing else, so I want to also get a 1 in there. And we know in math, if I go to x plus 2, for me to get a 1, it has to be x plus 2 over x plus 2. So those are some of the hints that we can use to actually assist us. So before I go on, now I told you to write that down. I'm going to give you a minute to try. And then we'll have a discussion of what to do. So you got a minute, go for it. Okay, can we come together? Anyone has any ideas? Or you still want a little more time? More, more time, sir. More time you want. All right.
Okay, I think uh, we're going to see if we got any suggestions at this stage. Any suggestions? All right, uh, I'm going to take you through this question. So I did tell you, if I want to get a one, let's start with the one. So if I want to get a one day, what I need on the top is the x plus two. So we can write down x plus two. But remember the original has a minus three. So for me to still maintain the minus three, two, what must I add to two so that I can get the negative three? Somebody tell me, that's an easy question. What do I need to add to, to two so that I still maintain the minus three? What need to be minus negative five? five? Well done. We all know that two minus five is minus three. So all I'm going to do now is rewrite this minus three as the two minus five because I brought in the two and there I have my minus five. And then all I'm going to do now is split this up. X plus two over X plus two, which I've done. And then you got the minus five over X plus two. And we know that X plus two over X plus two is one minus five over X plus two. And that's how we get the form. Which we can also rewrite which the question doesn't want, just for you to understand, this is the same thing as saying minus five over X plus two plus one. I just want to rewrite this. Okay, so we got minus five over X plus two plus one. Any questions? All right, so now let's look at 5.2. So 5.2 wants to know from us, write down the equation of vertical and horizontal asymptotes. See, famous question coming up on a hyperbola. Vertical and horizontal. Can I have an answer from someone? Somebody? The uh, vertical axis is x equals to negative, no, negative 2. Sir. Well done. Vertical asymptote, x equals to negative 2. Horizontal? Y is one, equal to two. one. Y is equal to one. So that'll give you two marks for a question like this. Okay, so let's move on. Okay, the next question, 5.3. Determine the intercepts of the graph of F with the X axis and the Y axis. So let's do that very quickly. To find the X intercept, what do we do? Y equals zero. Okay. To find the x intercept, we let y to be equal to zero. Zero is equal to one minus five over x plus two. And to find the y intercept, we let x equal to zero. So if we take our equation, right, we're going to say, in other words, we're finding f of zero, but I don't want to complicate it. Very simply put, what we're going to do is rewrite that and say y, which is f of x, is equal to 1 minus 5 over 0 plus 2. Okay, I'm going to give you a minute to quickly work that out and tell me what you get. As soon as you get an answer, let me know. Okay, I'm going to type this one. I'll do the easy one, all right? The easy one is just use a calculator here. Y is equal to. And if you type that on a calculator, did anyone type this on the calculator? Yes, no. Negative three. So it's two. negative three. For which side? 
Is that for the X intercept or Y intercept? The Y intercept, sir. How are you going to get that answer? Something's wrong with that answer. Because you got 5 over 2, 0 plus 2 is 2. 5 over 2 is actually 2 and a half. So 1 minus 2 and a half can never give us 3. So minus 3 over 2, sir. Minus 3 over 2. That makes more sense. Minus 3 over 2 or minus 1 and a half. We all happy with that? And if we work at the x-intercept, well, we are going to take the negative on the other side, and that will become positive, which is equal to 1. Put your 1 as a fraction. You can do a lovely cross-multiplication. And we will get x plus 2 is equal to 5, which gives you x to be equal to 3. And there we have it, our x-intercept and our y-intercept. Any questions here? Okay, we're on 5.4. Write down the value C if y is equal to x plus C is a line of symmetry to the graph of F. So they want you to find the axis of symmetry. And they already gave you the gradient to be 1. So we got y is equal to 1x plus C. What do we substitute into this equation? Asymptote 2. The asymptote. What are the asymptotes? Minus 2, we found it, am I right? And the y value is 1. So you can quickly substitute this in. You're going to get 1 is equal to x is minus 2 plus c. And that gives us c to be 3. And then we have our equation. y is equal to x plus 3. The asymptote. Oh, so can we always assume that the gradient is 1, sir? The it'll either one. be 1 or minus 1. You with me? It's going to be 1. Oh, never something like 2 or 3. No, no. The, the equation here will always be 1 or minus 1. All right? This is only for the hyperbola. Don't get confused with another graph now. Okay. Guys, uh, these are all questions that appear in past papers. So these are not my questions. I'm actually working on a past paper. So that means you need to get used to questions like this. Okay. All right. Now we see a little bit of a different hyperbola question because we don't know what type will come out in the exams. So let's read. The function if defined by A over X plus P plus Q. has the following properties. The range of f is, y is the element of r, y not equal to 1. So what is this telling us? Which letter does this represent? Q, Q, thank you. So we know the Q value is 1. We carry on to read. The graph f passes to the origin. If it passes to the origin, what do we know? What's the coordinates of the origin? 0, 0. There's another point they're giving us lies on the graph. Remember that's your x and that's your y. First question is to write down the value of q. Well, we just spoke about the value of q is equal to 1. Now they say calculate the values of a and p. So let's write our equation now. a over x plus p. Plus, question saying, plus Q. But we already know Q is 1. So my question to you is, how are we going to find P? Or how are we going to find A? Help me out. Comments. We have Matthew with us. Matthew, how do you think we're gonna do that? Matthew's not talking to us. Let's go to somebody else. We have Mr. Butulezi. How are we gonna do that, Mr. Butulezi? 
Uh, so maybe we could say y2 of minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So but the two coordinates that we've been given equals a. Y2 minus y1, that's a gradient formula. So, 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 which you're totally off track. I'm not sure, sir. I'm just throwing right. things out there. So, remember this and write it down. You will always substitute a point. If you're trying to find letters in an equation, you need to substitute a point. Now, what's the first point we know on this graph? Zero, zero. So, let's go and substitute zero, zero. Remember, zero represents x, y. Okay? So, our y value is zero. A over 0 plus P plus 1. And then we have A over P. 0 plus P is P. Take your 1 on the other side. It must become a negative 1. And let's put it over 1 as a fraction. We cross multiply. We end up with A to be minus P. So we have our first. Now you notice we got two unknowns. And if you're a good math student, you know if you've got two unknowns, you have to have two equations. In other words, you need to have a simultaneous equation. Is everyone with me? Okay, I just want to get a new screen here, okay? So let me let me quickly write that down again, just for you to take down. So we worked out the first equation, A is equal to minus P. Now, so we got A to be equal to minus P from the last slide. Now, we need to sub a point. So we substituted 0, 0. The other point they gave us is in third form. Looks quite nasty. So we got, I'm back to the original equation now, which is saying Y is equal to A over X plus P plus Q, we decided Q was 1. Okay. Now, what we're going to do, one of the ways we can do it, is to sub the second point, X, Y. So the Y value, you're seeing is root 2, plus 1, which is equal to now, A is equal to minus P. Or we could also say P is equal to minus A. We can use any one we want. Okay? So, on this one, I'm going to replace the A with a minus P. So that we don't have two unknowns. And then your X value is root 2 plus 2. That's the X value. Plus P. Plus 1. Okay, I'm going to stop there. Let's go. Do you understand what I did so far? Yes, sir. Okay. All I did was substitute. Now, I'm going to take this one on that side. Now, we're working with thirds. Grade 11 match, you do a lot of thirds. That one becomes a negative one. And if it becomes a negative one, we now have root 2 is equal to minus P over root 2 plus 2 plus p. Are you guys still with me? Yes, sir. Okay, well done. Now, all we have to do now is take out our calculator. Or well, let's cross multiply first. So if we cross multiply, Minus P times 1 is minus P. And then we're going to have root 2 into root 2 plus 2 plus P. Is everyone with me still? So now we can take our calculators out. Do you have a calculator with you? Root 2 times root 2. We can use a distributive law. Root 2 times root, root 2 is 2. Root 2 times 2 is plus 2 root 2. And root 2 times P is root 2 P. Any questions? 
Okay, so I, I need some space here. So I'm going to take this equation that you've already written in your books. Remember, we had A is equal to minus P. We can make a note of it on the top because of space. We had A equal to minus P. Now, we're going to try and simplify that. And to simplify that, we can do a very simple trick with that. Okay, we got root 2P and we got a minus P. We can say minus P plus root 2. Actually not. Sorry, let's do a change of sign. Okay. If we're looking at this equation that I'm working with. My pen doesn't want to write anymore. I don't know what happened to it. Okay. So we're going to move this root 2P on the other side. And that will give us minus p minus root 2p, which is actually equal to, and we got 2 plus 2 root p. Sorry, 2 root 2. Now, if we want to got two terms with p, we can use a calculator. Remember, this is on your calculator, you can say minus 1 minus root 2. But if you don't want to work with... Uh, you don't want to get decimals, and we keep the third form. We can put out P as a common factor. And if we take out P, we got a minus 1 minus root 2, which is actually equal to 2 plus 2 root 2. And then to find P, we should be dividing both sides by 1 minus root 2. Sorry, minus 1 minus root 2. Now, I don't have a calculator with me. Now, if we type... This on the calculator, what answer would you get? Negative two, sir. Somebody said negative two. Well done. So we found P. Now to find A, we are saying A is equal to the negative of P, which is negative two. And that gives us A to be positive two. That was a nice question, don't you think so? Okay, and, and, and then we have the equation. We have A and we have P. So I want to put it together. Okay, so I want to move on, all right? I think we covered it the same type of question. So we're going to skip that question six. And now we're going to move on to the next function.